Bill Gates once said that banking is necessary, but banks are not. It was true when he said it, it's true today. So banks are revolutionizing the way that they generate value. They're embracing open banking where they open their APIs to expose data and algorithms and processes to other organizations so that they can create diverse revenue streams for themselves. And so they're creating these robust API ecosystems and these things generate massive amounts of API calls, which could produce you know, a lot of latency issues or growing costs and legacy environments, but they also have some important uh, aspects. They allow banks faster response times to customer needs and demands and also compliance and regulatory needs. It also gives the customers a lot of control. Uh, they have the ability to share financial data or not, so it puts the, you know, it puts the power in the consumer's hands. Um, but the, of course, there's challenges with this. You've got security issues and performance issues and customer data protection issues, those kinds of things. So here's a, here's a little diagram of how this, this whole thing could play itself out. Uh, so banks, uh, like I said, in the context of open banking, they open their APIs and so they will publish uh, API endpoints. So I'll just put API endpoints here and API endpoints, I'll just put maybe a, you know, a few of these as little conceptual diagrams that are published uh, from the bank. And then, of course, you're going to have users or financial technology companies that banks now share information with that want to access these API endpoints. So over here, uh, you'll have, you know, users or I'll put, you know, fintech for financial technology uh, companies that want to access these API endpoints that the banks have now opened up, right? Um, so from a security perspective, you can implement what I'll call the, an edge right here. So here's, here is the edge. And at the edge, you can deploy F5 services. So I'll just put F5 services right here and put a little box around that. So as users or FinTech, you know, how do you, dis how do you distinguish you know, between the two? As uh, requests are made to your API endpoints, they're going to come through these, uh, these edge services, F5 services, before they're allowed access to the API endpoints, right? Um, here at the edge, F5 provides services like cloud-based services or managed services with Silverline, for example. And you can do a lot of things here you know, at the edge to secure um, the, uh, the API endpoints from an open banking perspective. You can, you can uh, deploy a web application firewall here, so a WAF, uh, which, by the way, you can deploy it here at the edge. You could also and or deploy it uh, here at the API endpoints. F5 uh, gives a lot of flexibility on when and where you can deploy a, uh, a web application firewall policy. Um, so, you know, if you deployed it here at the edge, then this could catch a lot of the common attack type traffic that would come into your API endpoints. But also you could deploy specific WAF policies here at the endpoints themselves and get very granular, very specific on how you protect these endpoints. Uh, so a WAF is very, uh, very important in terms of protection. Uh, some other things you can do here is, uh, is rate limiting. So I'll put rate limiting here um, at the edge. And what you can, and in fact, you can do it here at the edge or here at the endpoints as well. Um, rate limiting is important because if you have a large influx of requests, your API endpoints, then you can, you can slow those down here or here uh, and then allow the legitimate traffic through or you know, tell one user, hey, you need to slow down a little bit. Um, in terms of scalability on this, one little uh, quick point of information is that uh, F5 has a very large financial customer uh, that developed a developer portal uh, for their organization, and they deployed F5 technology uh, to enable scalability of all these uh, applications and API endpoints. And they were able to scale up to, to upwards of 12 billion operations per day with peaks of over 2 million operations per second with very, very small latency uh, in the order of 10 to 30 milliseconds of, uh, of latency. So in terms of performance of the API endpoints, F5 certainly provides the performance here uh, while you can still rate limit here at the edge or at the endpoints. Um, also, what you can do is what I'll call payload validation or payload inspection. Um, and when API endpoints are being accessed, when the payload is sent to the API endpoint, the, uh, the F5 technology can actually inspect the contents of the payload itself to see if there's anything malicious going on in there. And of course, if there's anything wrong, then it could you know, block that request. Um, 
Another thing is HTTP uh, method. I'll just put HTTP method right here. Uh, method enforcement is what this is. So uh, in, in the context of open API, there are different specifications and publications um, that call for REST-based APIs. And REST-based or RESTful APIs allow a multitude of different HTTP methods to be you know, used in an API call. Um, but not every single method needs to be uh, used for every single endpoint, right? And so what the F5 technology can do is, um, is can, you know, it can look at the actual method that is being requested uh, for that specific endpoint. And if that method is not needed for that endpoint, then it can block that request as well. So it, uh, it provides a, a really uh, good you know, uh, security for those API endpoints. Um, another thing that you can do here is bot protection. Um, and so there's a whole host of F5 technology um, from anti-bot mobile uh, SDK to proactive bot defense. And of course, shape security uh, is the best in the world at bot protection. And bots are a real problem for, frankly, any traffic today. Uh, so while users are going to access your API endpoints or financial technology, you know, partners are going to access your API endpoints from a bank perspective, you certainly are going to have attackers that are going to come after your API endpoints. And a lot of that attack traffic is going to be in the form of automated bot traffic. And so you can, uh, you can implement bot protection here as well to secure your API endpoints. Um, from a customer data perspective, I'm going to put auth right here. And when I say auth, I'm referencing authentication and authorization, frankly. Um, there is a need for rapid communication between banks and financial technology companies, their partners that they've opened up uh, this information to. And so to know that a user is who they say they are, uh, and so they've provided that authentication, um, and then to provide the authorization that they need to get to a specific endpoint or not, F5 can take care of all of that right here. Uh, this also uh, comes into play significantly when users go to share their data or to allow the sharing of their data. You want to make sure that you've authenticated that specific user. So as a bank shares that data with a, with a fintech partner, then they know, um, you know who that user is for sure before they go to share the data. Uh, so it's, it's very important to, uh, you know, to, to provide the security um, and the operational, you know, of efficiencies here at the F5 services. Uh, and then F5 also, what I'm going to put last here is a, uh, is a central, central control plane. Control plane. And this kind of sits above, I'm just going to kind of put a box around this whole thing. This sits above all of this. So from a central control plane perspective, F5 allows the capability to um, to publish API endpoints from a centralized uh, perspective, and they also allow for the security, um, you know, to, uh, to implement security across all the API endpoints from a central uh, and simplified control plane perspective. So what you can do here is take the vision of open banking, where banks are now opening APIs to partners, uh, financial technology companies, um, and you can use this actual technology, the F5 um, technology to bring this uh, open banking concept to life. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this, you can click here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.